Hey guys, welcome to digit.in and today it's a beautiful sunny day and I want to talk to you about a topic that's actually been something that I've been following for a very long time and it's called Intel Evo. What is Intel Evo? So we're going to talk about that because you're going to be seeing a lot of laptops with that branding showing up in the next few months. But it's not something really new. It's something Intel's had in the works for many years. So let's go back. But before we get into all the details, make sure to hit the subscribe button on our channel and of course hit the bell icon so that you don't miss any updates from us. Now let's wind back to 2019 where Intel introduced something called Project Athena. Now Project Athena was essentially Intel wouldn't officially call it this, but I think it would be called the next big evolution for ultrabooks. Athena was about bringing together certain technologies based on user experience to the thin and light form factor. So Intel kind of laid out these uh, key experience indicators. There were things like, well, it has to be a touch screen. You have to have instant wake. Thunderbolt 3 became a standard. There was also things like better battery life, etc., etc. And there were all of these very interesting things. Um, one of the requirements also was that it has to be a two-in-one. Intel also laid down guidelines with respect to spec. So you had to have a minimum of 8 GB of RAM, uh, 128 GB of storage, uh, NVMe fast storage at that. So you had all of this in place, but there was a huge problem. The problem was Project Athena was just a set of guidelines. That's one. And second thing was Project Athena was not an official entity. It was just something that Intel was referring to as a ongoing project, which it still is, by the way. So the problem was exactly that. If you were buying a laptop, it could meet some of the specs of Project Athena or all of them, but you wouldn't really know because, well, like many of you may remember the Intel Inside sticker or you see, uh, you know, the Core i7 or the Core i5. Some of you see the NVIDIA GeForce logo. So all of these logos get etched onto laptops um, and you know that's actually what's inside. But with Project Athena, there was no such branding and there was no way, therefore, for a consumer to know whether a particular laptop met all of the guidelines or just some of them or none of them for that matter. So there was a problem and that has finally been addressed in revision two of Project Athena and what Intel calls Evo. So the Intel Evo platform has specific features and every single one of them has to be met by a laptop OEM in order to certify that laptop as Evo certified. In fact, you also get a sticker that tells you this is an Evo certified platform. So what exactly goes into making a laptop Evo certified? So in order to go through what exactly Project Evo entails, we've got the HP Spectre X360. Now this is one of the first laptops in India with the Evo certification. There are a few others, there's one from Acer, there's some from Lenovo, but this is one of the first to have landed at least in our lab, so this is what we're gonna talk about. So what exactly does Intel Evo mean? So here are the minimum specs and features a laptop needs to have in order to be certified as Intel Evo certified. You know? So yeah. First, let's talk instant wake. Now, Intel has been working on making the laptop wake up faster for a very long time. Up until now, it's mostly been up to the OEMs and how they implement this feature. But ever since the Project Athena program kicked off, Intel set a few guidelines in place and worked closely with the OEM partners to deliver some very, very impressive wake up times. According to the Project Evo guidelines, a laptop must wake up in under one second to basically go from sleep to log in within a second. That's very impressive. In conjunction with that, uh, Evo also requires a method of biometric authentication. So this could be fingerprint based, it could be Windows Hello, facial recognition. It could also be gaze based or based on the proximity of your smartphone with the laptop. That authentication happens over Bluetooth. So the last two, which is the gaze wake and uh, Bluetooth proximity unlock are optional and you will find them in some laptops. In fact, last year, that's 2020 January at CES, Intel showed off a few machines that had this feature, which is pretty amazing. The second thing that uh, for, uh, the laptop needs to have in order to be EVO certified is to sport minimum of 8 GB of DDR4 memory and it has to be in dual channel configuration. Additionally, the laptop also must have a minimum of 256 GB of NVMe based storage. So all of these components combined, so the fast RAM, the fast storage, 
combined with, of course, the fact that uh, these laptops need to be running on minimum of 11th gen Intel processors, all of this comes together to give you instant wake. Then, above and beyond that, you have a few other things as well. First off is connectivity. For connectivity, Intel mandates a minimum of Wi-Fi 6 and, of course, Thunderbolt or rather USB 4. Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 are very similar in nature in the sense that they have a total throughput of 40 Gbps, but Thunderbolt 4 can also carry, carry a higher video signal, etc. For all intents and purposes, as long as you have minimum of USB 4, you should also be fine. And that is a requirement on these laptops. Talking about USB-C, uh, or rather USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4, the EVO program also mandates a few other things. One is charging over USB Type-C, uh, which is great because that means uh, universal cables are back. And then the other thing is fast charging. Now this particular HP um, Spectre X360 can give you about four hours of use in 30 minutes of charge. That's from zero uh, with the battery completely dead. You charge it for 30 minutes and you get about four hours. We've actually been testing these features out uh, quite intensely and we'll be talking about them in our review, uh, which is gonna come out at a later point. Now, so you've got fast charging, you've got charging over USB-C. These are mandated, by the way, for you to meet the EVO platform. And other than that, there are a few other things as well. The third area of requirement actually comes down to the form factor. Now, Intel mandates that for a laptop to be certified EVO, it needs to be under 15 millimeters of thickness, irrespective of whether it's a two-in-one or if it's a standard non-foldable laptop. Now, that was one thing with Project Athena. Athena required the form factor to be foldable or detachable or something of that sort. But with Evo, you can actually get regular laptops that are also certified by the program, which is actually great for those of you who want these features but don't really care about you know the folding aspect or the uh, detachable aspect of things. The other requirement is that for any laptop within the 12 to 15 inch size, which is what can be certified, uh, the displays have to be touch enabled, they have to have narrow bezels, the trackpad must use precision drivers, which is so great. And of course, this applies to whether you're using a fanless or a design which requires a fan for cooling the machine. Last is the webcam, which has to be minimum 720p which honestly we feel that Intel could have done one better and mandated 1080p, but you know, it's still something. Last but not the least, you've got some other uh, features as well with respect to AI and intelligence. Uh, by virtue of the fact that these machines have to use Intel's 11th generation core series of processors, you also get things for, uh, like support for OpenVINO on the platform itself, uh, Intel Boost Plus, etc., and of course, you also get other AI based features, which is like when you're, for example, far field voice, um, then also AI noise reduction when you're having actual conversations on the machine. Let's say if you're in a Skype call or a Zoom call, so it'll, the AI will reduce the noise and uh, using just the onboard microphones. And last in the intelligence features are things like uh, auto dimming of the display when you're not looking at it, gaze based locking, unlocking, etc. So overall, Evo is actually a platform that's designed to sort of really boost the speed at which you interact with your laptop. It's all about the speed with which you do it. And of course, um, that includes not just, you know, the processor speed, but also the way, the speed at which you resume your work when the laptop is sleeping, um, uh, the speed at which you transfer files here and there, whether it's over wireless, thanks to Wi-Fi 6, or if it's using USB Type-C. And uh, there's quite a few amazing things. And all of these we find in the HP Spectre X360 that we have here. This particular laptop features both fingerprint and facial recognition biometrics. It has two USB type four ports, uh, one of them being used for charging. And as I also mentioned, the laptop delivers about four hours of use and 30 minutes of charge. That use is in my opinion, very, very liberal because the minute you start getting into something like uh, video playback or streaming music over Bluetooth, the battery life does drop. Um, so there are specific test scenarios that we've been using and I'm gonna to talk to you about them in the review. The X360 is also, as the name suggests, a convertible tablet. So you can literally just, you know, uh, take the machine and flip it over use it as a tablet, use it as uh, just a drawing screen, whatever you may want. 
and that's actually very convenient. HP bundles a stylus with this machine in the box, which is really cool as it does a compatible fast charger. You also get a dongle to actually uh, add some more ports. You get a USB type A port. In fact, what's really cool is that HP has actually engineered a type A port into the super slim chassis. Like it's so thin, it's under 15 millimeters. And you would wonder how did HP manage to get a type A port in here? Well, they use some clever engineering and it's right here. So you can take a closer look at it. Then other than that, you of course get a touch screen, which has five point multi-touch at least. That's what I've tested so far. I haven't gone all hands on deck. And in general, a um, couple of things that do stand out is definitely the speed at which this laptop resumes work. Um, there's also, of course, you know, the fact that this is using Intel's uh, 11 gen processors. You get Intel XE graphics which do speed up a lot of things such as creative programs or Lightroom, Photoshop, even a little bit of Premiere as long as you're not being very demanding of it. Like you could cut a 1080p timeline in this but as long as you're not applying too many effects. And of course, the downside being the render times will be long. So overall, the Evo platform is about pushing this thin and light form factor into an era where thin and light is just not enough. You also want great battery life. This. Like Intel requires nine hours of battery life on a normal use. What this laptop delivers is interesting and we'll talk about that in the review. So make sure to hit the subscribe button on our channel and of course hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out the review of the HP Spectre X360 when it's out. As for me, I'm going to see you in the next one.